Hey, Bayek, it's me, Ian. and in today's video, I'm continuing my look at classic Doctor Who, the third and fourth Doctor eras, the golden era. Yes, and today's story is absolutely, well, it's a classic, it really is. It is The Brain of Morbius from 1976 and this has a real history with it a real bit of controversy as well with it but what a story it's just amazing fourth doctor story so let's get into it now um this was transmitted on the 3rd of january to the 24th of january 1976 it's a four part story and this is from season 13. And Tom Baker is just, well, he's just knocking it out of the ballpark, as I say. It's just brilliant. It is superb form. And this is this story just he just perfect for him. Now, um, it was written by Terence Dix, but um a few changes were made by Robert Holmes to it. I say a few changes, quite significant changes. And um, it, at the time, Terence Sticks wasn't very pleased about it. But um, what they, I think now on reflection, he realizes, you know, probably why it was done um, and what have you. But. Um, uh, so the name on the credit is Robert Robin Bland. That's who Robert Holmes decided to make. But what a great job Robert Holmes has done on this story. Um, now, um, of course, it was usual produced by Philip Inchcliffe, and I say Robert Holmes is the script editor. This is just a great partnership, as we know. Um, was directed by Christopher Barry, and what a great uh, servant to Doctor Who as a direct he was. Um, the Daleks, he did, goes right back to 1963 to 64 story. Rescue 1965, the Romans 65, um, the Savages 1966, the power of the Daleks, yes, 1966. The brilliant Patrick Troughton um, opening episode. Um, and the Demons, he did 1971. Um, he did The Mutants, 1972. Robot, of course, 1974. A Creature of the Pit, 1979. Brilliant, absolutely fantastic director. Uh, and again, he does such a lot with this story. The cat, um, let me oh, sorry, just before I go into that, previously we've had um, the android invasion from 1975, and then this is going to be followed by the seeds of doom 1976. So, yes, there you are. So, let's get into the cast Tom Baker, of course, here he is, fourth doctor, then Elizabeth Sladen again as Sarah Jane Smith. Brilliant, fantastic companion, all-time great. Then the major sort of actor, um, guest star, is Philip Maddox as, well, Dr. Salon. Oh, yes, he's crazy. He's fantastic. And what a job um, Phil Maddox does. Of course, he's, Phil Maddox is such a great actor. He was in... Um, in Doctor Who stories, Dalek Invasion of Earth, the film, yeah, with Peter Cushion, he had a small role in that, 1966. The Crotons, yes, a Patrick Trouton story, Second Doctor, he was in that. And also the War Games, the, the climax of the Patrick Trouton era, 
1969. Then he was in The Power of Crow um, in 1978-79. Uh, um, but I just have to say this. He's, of course, most famously, he was in the Dad's Army episode, The Deadly Attachment. Um, from 1973. That is a classic episode. But don't tell him, Pike. Yes, it's that one. Fantastic. Is in that? Yes, as a German, uh, I think, submarine um, captain. Is really good. Yes. Then we've got Colin Fay playing Connor. This was a very early role for him. Um. And what a great job he brings to this character. Wonderful. Uh, then we have Cynthia Granville playing Maron. Yes, she's, of course, the um, leader of the uh, Sisters of Khan. Um, important part in the uh, story. Then we've got Jilly Brown playing um, uh, uh, Oika. Again, another important part. This in fact was an early role, I think, for her as well. And she's carried on. And she still seemed really pleased to be remembered for this appearance in Doctor Who. Uh, then we've got Michael Spice doing the voice of Morbius. And what a job he does. Absolutely fantastic. He was also um, the villain in The Talons of Wang Chang from 1977. Another real classic Doctor Who star. Right? So he's got some good pedigree. Then we've got Stuart Fell again. He's popped up such a lot as uh, the Morbius monster stuntman actor. He's, he just goes back and he's starting, I think, in... Um, 1971 in the Terror of the Autons. Had so many roles over the years, right up to the Five Doctors in 1983. What a character he is. Fantastic. Um, so, um, now, what is this story about? Well, it's set on the planet Khan, where the surgeon, Dr. Solon, he He's seeking to create a body for the Time Lord, Morbius, who was an evil criminal genius. <laughs> they always are, aren't they? And, um, well, he's got his brain and he's been putting uh, his body together. But he could do with a really nice head to put it all together in and... Um, that's <laughs> crazy, isn't it? Uh, so he's doing it. But he's on the planet Khan. And this, of course, we have the Sisters of Khan. Now, they are in many ways linked with the Time Lords. And they have this elixir of life, which they use a lot. But they've got a problem because it seems to be going down. They're running out of it. And uh, there's not much left. The flame, the eternal flame is going down. And they're worried about it. And, of course, they actually begin to think that when they discover the Doctor, who, you know, as usual, just arrives <laughs> like he does, uh, the TARDIS <laughs> always drags him there. Um, then, yes, this is... Um, they see him as a, a threat. That he's come as a time lord interfering... It's come to uh, sort them out. <laughs> That's what they think anyhow. But um, we've got all these elements together uh, on this planet and the story brilliantly progresses. Um, it is really a gothic horror story with science fiction. A lot of influences, you know. You've got, obviously, the Frankenstein influence um, Morbius itself is the name uh, in the Forbidden Planet as well, the 1956 sci-fi classic. You've got other influences, but this gothic film and the whole sets, brilliant designs, absolutely, on the budget again. Wow, they are really knocking it out, Doctor Who. 
brilliant designs, studio bound episode that is, wow, they must have used every single penny for this episode, really. So the quality of the acting is, as usual, is fantastic. The direction, amazing. Um, and this story, of course, um, was in this period. And of course, it ran into a spot of trouble with, you've guessed it, Mary Whitehouse again. I mean, the see it is quite frightening. I mean, it is a horror, but I mean, really, kids do love a bit of horror. I think they, it was typical of that time, the panic and alarm and um, Doctor Who once again got picked upon. Um, so there was a few problems there with censorship. Um, but um, I, I love this. Also, in modern times, um, with the 13th Doctor Timeless Child episode, there's been um, a look back at classic Doctor Who, and this episode particularly gets a mention because we see in this story the Doctor showing that there could well have been other um, Time Lord Doctors um, before the first Doctor. We see the faces there. Yes, and this fits nicely. Of course, nobody knew, knew at the time, and nobody would, because, you know, the stories write themselves, the mythology develops over the years. But it's interesting to see that, that, they had the possibility that there was more of the Doctor than we actually know. And it goes back further and further. Fantastic, you know, seeing this. And, um, yeah, it's often cited in that. Of course, these things can change, and they may well over the years again. Russell T. Davis in the new series may adapt some of this, may not. I don't know, but it's fascinating looking at that. Um, really is. Now, the history of this um, in terms of release is also interesting. Um, it was a very early VHS release in 1984, but it was a very much edited uh, omnibus edition. Also, there were releases. Yeah, this is really uh, interesting. On Betamax at the time, on Laserdisc, and also on a defunct... Uh, Philip 2000 series as well. Both Betamax and this one, of course, lost out to VHS. But yet, their early releases, they must be extremely valuable and rare if people have got copies of them. I'll tell you. But the um, episodic release of um, um, the uh, story did eventually come out um, in 1990 on VHS. Then, of course, the very um, release on DVD came in 2008. Yes. Um, which is this. Yes. Now, we haven't yet got a Blu-ray release yet, but it will come. Season 13 will come out in the Doctor Who collection. So here's the um, look at it there. Still available, very cheap. You can get hold of this. And what a great story it is to have. Yeah, the usual there in my... This, this is great. Highly recommended. It's exciting, you know, what really is. It really makes you so happy. And I, well, it does for me with about classic Doctor watching stories like this. Absolutely adore the series now. It really gives me the... Oh, yeah, what an era this was. It really was. Fantastic. And that's it. <laughs> right, so... Um, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And if you haven't subscribed and watched one of these, please subscribe, because then we let you know when I produce all these videos and... Uh, if you like it, please give it a like. It helps with algorithms. Hopefully more people then might like it. And it all costs note. Yep, note. 
that's fantastic nowadays. And of course, well, um, if you've got any comments, please put your comments. I love to hear your comments. Fantastic. I really do. I really enjoy your comments. So please put them. That's it. Thank you. Um, I'll reply to every comment. Yeah, I will. Thank you. So, all I've got to say is, I'll see thee. I'll see thee again.